Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today, a production of the University of the District of Columbia. Welcome back to the education program that connects you to contemporary issues, people, and institutions involved in the world of higher education. Today, we'll be talking about nominations to the US Service Academies. Carol Ford processes applications, sets up interviews with review boards, and provides Senator Mark Warner with specific recommendations for Military Service Academy nominations. As a constituent services representative for the Senator, and before that for Congressman Tom Davis, Carol has handled over 4,000 nomination applications. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me. Well, we're delighted you're here. Uh, maybe, Carol, if we could start with an overview of what are the service academies and, and why would so many people want to go to the service academies? There are five military service academies, the oldest being West Point. That's also known as the Military Academy at West Point. Then there's the United States Naval Academy, United States Coast Guard Academy, United States Merchant Marine Academy, and the United States Air Force Academy. A lot of the uh, reasons that people want to go to the academy basically is it is, those are the leadership institutes for our military. So when you graduate from there, you will be going as a commissioned officer into the uh, different services. And your job with the senator is to essentially supervise and process applications of students who are thinking about trying to go to those academies. Yes, by law, you must, everybody who attends an academy must have some kind of nomination. And one of the nominating sources is from your senator or uh, from your congressman. And so we do all the processing for the Senator Warner. Well, fair enough. If we can talk about that a little bit, because I think a lot of people think one of two things. Either, well, if I don't know my congressman, therefore I'll never get a nomination. Mm -hmm. Or on the other hand, if my next door neighbor is Congressman Jones or Smith, therefore I'm destined to go to West Point. Well, I'm not going to speak for all the different congressmen and senators because they all have their own processes. But I've been fortunate enough to work for two individuals who truly believe that their credibility is at stake when they nominate people to the academies. We in Virginia have a very competitive system. We have a lot of competitive students, and so we cannot be into cronyism per se. We have to send qualified students to the academies. Uh, we get in over 700 uh, applications just in the senator's office this past time. So we need to narrow it down and make sure that the senator will only nominate credible people. Well, and how, how do we do that, the royal way? You know, how does Senator Warner do that more specifically? Uh, the applications come in by a certain deadline. It was in the end of September for this year. Uh, I actually read every single application that comes in. I have to give every, and that's letters of recommendations, scores, uh, uh, transcripts, and I try to make sure that the most qualified people are then interviewed by the Senator's Review Board members. He has selected uh, three people from each academy that are academy graduates to actually interview these students. A lot of times what you see on paper is not necessarily what you get in, in person. And so he wants to make sure that there's a face and a personality to go with the file. They then rank the uh, different students and I then work with the different congressional offices trying to make sure as many qualified Virginians are nominated. We take those rankings to the senator and he makes his final determination. So does the senator actually meet any of the students before they're nominated? He does not. And the real purpose in that is so that he keeps the political process out of the nomination process. Uh, because there's so many students, he does not have time to meet everybody who we, who we interview. If he met some of the students, it would be unfair to those that he didn't meet with. There are congressmen that will meet individually with their students just because they don't have as many people that are applying. Uh, but in this case, we, there's just no time for him to be doing all that. Well, and how would, how would somebody find out about this process? I mean, obviously, they're going to watch this show about it. But aside from this, how else do people find out about it? If you go on the senators or congressmen websites, all of them have information about the nomination process. If you go to the academy websites, all of them will tell the student that they must have a nomination and they give the different nominating sources and they will direct them to the senators and the, and the congressmen's websites. Uh, we also have, the senator also holds a Virginia Academy Day, which will be in Charlottesville March 29th. I'll put a plug in for that. Uh, and um, that's a good way to be meeting with all the representatives from the academies as well as some of the other uh, ROTC groups and, and options that they have in Virginia. Well, that's interesting in terms of the options. So let's assume that I'm a high school student and I'm 16 years old and I'm thinking about what I want to do with my future. 
maybe I'm interested in the academies, maybe I'm interested in VMI, maybe I'm interested in the Citadel, maybe I'm interested in a liberal arts college. Can you walk me through what, what would happen at this point? Go exploring. Not everybody who wants to go to an academy is going to get in just because of the class size. So you never al always put your uh, eggs into one basket. If you're going to go to an academy, you will always want to also apply to an ROTC program because you need a backup. You have to have plan B, but anybody applying to colleges knows that. Um, you need to see what you want to do. Do you want a college experience, a typical college experience, where you could also get that with being part of an ROTC program? Or do you want a military experience which would give you the academy? Well, and how is the academy different from the ROTC? Uh, everybody who graduates from the academy will graduate with a Bachelor's of Science. Now, most of them will be engineering degrees, but they do actually have some um, liberal arts degrees. Even English majors, though, will be taking engineering courses, calculus, physics, chemistry. Even uh, engineering students will be taking liberal arts classes. And in fact, most times, they take more liberal arts classes than some of the liberal arts schools. But then how, then, but what is a student who's doing ROTC doing? Oh, he's, he's actually also taking college classes. He can be getting his degree in anything he wants to be getting and I should say he or she because I don't want to leave out the females in this, uh, but he or she. Uh, but they will also be taking special ROTC classes in, in military training, leadership, and that sort of thing. So they're going to be taking additional classes than the regular college student. Well, fair enough. In terms of the, the money, if you don't mind me asking about the money of that, a, a lot of uh, my students have asked about this over the years. My understanding is that it's a great, great deal for a student who gets, you know, gets to go through, let's say, the Naval Academy and, get, and goes somewhere and comes back, but obviously, you know, this is dangerous work. It is. Yes, it is a free education, but that free education then gives you a five years commitment into the military. And every student that's now applying should think, I will probably be deployed. And that's a serious discussion that he, they should be having with themselves, their families, their, their teachers, because once you get deployed, we've seen what happens over um, in Afghanistan, Iraq. This is, this is an, a life and death kind of decision. So you cannot go to the academy without thinking you are going to be deployed at some point in time. So is that, you know, yes, it is a free education, but you're going to be paying for it in the long run. Well, what if my mom or dad doesn't support it, but I do? Well, that's hard. I will tell you that you are, you are the one, the student needs to be the one who wants to go to the academy. It is nice if they have family support because there's going to be days where they're wishing why did they go to the academy. It's hard. This is a hard, nobody really enjoys, especially their first year in an academy. And so if they have a, a support group, it is very nice and helpful. But it has to be the child's decision to go and they need to they need to come to that conclusion on their own I've seen people where the parents are also pushing the child to go and that is a wrong thing to do because they won't last they will not last the, the plebe summers they will not last uh, the the drilling they will not last the hard classes and so it really has to always come from the, the child himself and speaking of the child, are, are all the students 16 years old who are coming to talk to you for a nomination? No. Actually, you have to be at least 17 to apply, and you cannot be past your 23rd, you cannot have reached your 23rd birthday. We have a lot of students that come in that are seniors in college, I mean seniors in high school that are looking for nominations and going directly to the academy. But we also have a lot of the freshmen in, in uh, colleges. We actually had a sophomore in college who's also applying. And those make wonderful uh, applicants. They're stronger. They're a year older. They're a year more mature. They've had a year more schooling. And I would say some of the senator's top candidates this year are people who are freshmen in uh, colleges. But that's not even the only way you can get into the academies. You could be an enlisted personnel, and they have slots available for those individuals, too. Uh, we have some returning veterans who have been enlisted who will go into the academy. So there's different directions and paths to take to get to an academy. And some go to prep schools, even, uh, which, the found, which the academies sometimes pay for, sometimes they don't. Um, so, and they've already been out of high school for a year. When you mentioned maturity, 
uh, not every 16, 17 year old is as mature as the next 16 or 17 year old. What do we do, or what do you do with students who perhaps have made some bad choices along the way? Uh, first of all, we look to see if they've learned from them. Because a lot of times that's part of the process. And actually, a, a, it's a stronger applicant who has made a mistake and has learned from them. Some of these students who have lived a, lived a good life who've had everything go their way, never made anything wrong decision, they're gonna have a hard time their first year in the academy. So we don't hold it against them. It depends on what kind of mistakes they make, obviously. Uh, but we look at the whole person just like the academy and the academy knows that they, they are teenagers that, are, that people are looking at. So as long as the mistake's not too bad, then we're okay with it. And what about athletes? How do you deal with athletes who come through your office? Um, this, the Academy lets us know whether or not they have an athlete that they're recruiting. No matter, as, as I indicated from the very beginning, if you want to go to Academy, you have to have a nomination. Even recruited athletes have to have nominations. Uh, we do look, we try to help the Academies. If they have somebody of interest that they have uh, in mind, then we do try to work out somewhere in the Commonwealth a nomination for them. Uh, but we're not also going to give up just because it's a recruited athlete, we're not going to necessarily let somebody else who wants to go to the academy uh, not get a nomination just because that somebody is a recruited athlete. So it's a zero-sum game or it's not a zero-sum game? I'm well, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, in terms of, in terms of if you get X number of uh, people to nominate, Right, if one person is being nominated, then perhaps somebody else isn't being nominated. It is. Uh, every congressman and senator are allowed 10 nominations. We're guaranteed one offer off of that uh, list of 10. Because Virginia has so many qualified students, uh, Senator Warner has, wants me to talk to the different congressional offices and Senator Kane's office and see if we can work on trying to not maybe double nominate or triple nominate an individual so that everybody who's qualified uh, is taken care of. So we do, we do our best not to leave anybody out if we feel like they're truly qualified. And if somebody is qualified, but I guess that what I wanted to get to is the issue of are they qualified? So who's determining whether or not somebody's qualified? That's really your job, or that's the job of the teachers who are recommending them to you in the first place? It's a combination. I, I know what the academy's looking for. Um, they're looking for certain SAT scores. They're looking for certain grades. They're looking for certain courses. Um, they want people who've taken calculus. Uh, and, and, and really, this is when I'm talking about Virginia. Sometimes in some of the other states, it's not as competitive, and so the requirements aren't quite as high. Uh, we're looking for leaders, we're looking for people who are athletic, we're looking for people who've had uh, community service and, and work in si with uh, uh, civic associations. So when we say qualify, we're looking for someone who has excelled in all different avenues. Eagle Scouts are great, Girl Scouts with Gold Awards are great, people who've taken the lead in, in, act in their clubs, junior class presidents, senior class presidents, the leadership. But those kids, as you well know, are often recruited by other colleges and universities that have nothing to do with military academies. That is one reason why we have interviews. We want to find out how serious they are in attending an academy. Um, I, you know, some of these people could be going to MIT, Princeton, UVA, Virginia Tech. We need to know that we're going to nominate someone who really wants to go to an academy so we don't waste a nomination. And what about the issue of alumni uh, connections and, alumni and the parents? So we touched on that a little bit before, but you know, in, in, in college admissions, there's always this controversy about, should we give extra bonus points for students whose kids went to, uh, students whose parents went to that university? Well, in reality, that's gonna be up to the academy as well, whether they're giving bonus points or not. The one place that will help a student is that uh, if your parent is a retired or active duty military service, they are eligible for a presidential nomination. And that puts you into a different category. And that's just a matter of them applying and receiving it if they're qualified. So that does give them an extra step up on a kind of nomination. Uh, if your grandfather was an admiral or whatever, we leave that to the academy. Except that during the interview, we understand that they understand what military life is all about. And they're walking into it with open eyes, where some people are very naive when they're thinking, oh, I want to go to the Air Force Academy because I like to fly airplanes. That's really not the only reason someone needs to be going to the Air Force Academy. 
Well, it is a world unto itself. I mean, I was never in the military, but I have a very good friend from uh, growing up who was, and I went to visit him in Germany many, many years ago. He was on an army base, and it's a world, it was a world unto itself. It is a world unto itself, and the schooling is a world unto itself, and that's why we were talking about if you want to be in a military environment, that's a good place to be at the academy. If you want to be still a teenager and having a college life, please go apply for an ROTC program uh, because that's gonna, you're going to be happier in the long run that way. And then you'll still end up being a commissioned officer, so the end result is the same. What about if, if my parents were from another country? Can I still go through this nomination process? As long as you are a United States citizen, you may apply. So my parents don't have to be U.S. citizens, but as long as I'm a U.S. citizen? Correct. Fair enough. Okay, and in terms of what about if I go to get some of my schooling overseas? So let's say I go to an international school in Japan. We have great candidates that are being in schools overseas. We have a candidate that we interviewed this year who has never been to school in the United States of America because their parents uh, have always been overseas. They make great, eight great applicants. They've seen the world. They've got a global perspective. So they do understand how to deal with different cultures. They also usually speak different languages, which is very helpful. So that's not a problem. We do telephone interviews and, and people might be speaking on a Saturday night at midnight their time, but they're fine. Well, what are the things that, that you want to urge people not to do? There must be things that kids do that don't, are not helpful. One thing, uh, the, a lot of the high schools have the junior ROTC programs, and a lot of the students will get involved in that, but then they don't get involved in other clubs or athletics, and we see this time and again. And although I, I love the JROTC programs, you can't only do that. Uh, and that has really hurt a lot of our students who've come through the application process. So you want them to play sports, you want them to get involved in drama, you want them to get involved in debate as well? Yes, yes. And take leadership roles in doing any of that. We've had a lot of drum majors come through. For, for, for some reason, it seemed like I had 10 drum majors trying to apply to the Naval Academy a couple of years ago. Um, that's okay, it's a leadership position. They know how to organize people, they know time management. So a lot of those skills transfer very nicely. Well, fair enough. In terms of the Naval Academy, do more people from Virginia have an interest in the Naval Academy than, let's say, the Air Force Academy because of location? Yes. Absolutely, yes. Uh, it is very competitive to go to the Naval Academy from Virginia. It's, it's hard to get in directly to the Academy. It's hard to get nominations. Uh, by far, uh, when we're doing interviewing, we should be interviewing probably double the number of because we have that many qualified people trying to get the Naval Academy. And it's, it's just... It's hard. It's very hard. And one of the one of the academies does not require a, uh, a nomination, if I'm if I'm correct. True. The Coast Guard Academy does not. You just apply to the Coast Guard Academy like you do normal schools. But you would still be commissioned at the end of that. Yes. So that's not a bad way to go for students who perhaps don't get through the nomination process. Correct. Correct. But they have more of a humanitarian purpose than they do. Um, military service so they have a, a slightly different function so just make sure that that's what you're interested in if you're applying to the Coast Guard Academy. But you know I like what you're saying about make sure you're interested because I, it really gets to the issue of what your intent is because yes it's a free education and yes you know it's, it's very prestigious but it's not free in terms of going to Afghanistan or somewhere else and it's not free in terms of lifestyle. No it's not. They own you. <laughs> so uh, you, have to, you have to be able and willing to accept the rules and regulations that the academies are going to be giving to you and then the military lifestyle afterwards. We like to see individuals who want to make this a career. If we're nominating somebody to get this free education, we want them to put it to good use. We, you know, we don't want them to say, okay, now we're just going to do five years, then we're going to get out. I, we love to see people who want to make this a career. What do other countries do? Do other countries have anything like this for their military? Um, they, they do, and in fact, sometimes we will have the, the academies, and I stay out of this part of the process, but uh, academies will have uh, reciprocal agreements where some of uh, their students will come over to West Point and some of the West Point students will go overseas to theirs just for uh, it's an exchange program they get to know what other it's a cultural exchange they get to understand what other countries are thinking the students are thinking and and uh, learn that way too 
Well, in terms of other countries, you know, obviously there's this kind of component about security that affects us all. Are you concerned about having more people with, like, on one hand, you can see that more people with international experience is good. On the other hand, more people with international experience opens up a lot of doors that perhaps might be dangerous to some service members. And luckily, I don't have to worry about that. That's the Academy's problem. <laughs> well, how do they sort that out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they, they have uh, numbers and issues and bu balance budgets that they have to worry about. So I, I leave that in the Academy's hands. Fair enough. And in terms of other people who do have your job, for other senators and members of Congress, do you liaise with them? Or how, how do you interact with them to, to make sure that you're all doing similar things? Statewide, I am communication with all the congressional offices and Senator Kane's office. Uh, we talk about when we're having academy days. We talk about who someone might nominate and might not nominate or, or interview. Uh, in Virginia, we try to stay cohesive. I, I like everybody to be able to be on the same page. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they're Republicans or Democrats. We're all in this together, and our goal is to get the qualified students nominated. Around the country, I stay in contact. Uh, sometimes we have congressional uh, meetings out at the academy so that we get to see them. Um, I'm also more than willing to talk, call if there's somebody, say, from Georgia who thinks that they're coming through a Virginia senator and, and need to go through Georgia. I, I'm not afraid to talk to those, to those congressional offices to find out what they're doing, what their process is, deadlines. Um, so it's just a matter of picking up a phone call, and I don't mind doing that at all. Well, would you mind saying a word or two about the District of Columbia? I mean, we're taping the show at the University of the District of Columbia, and there are a number of residents of the District of Columbia who watch this. I wish there would be more students who are interested in the military from the District of Columbia. They don't normally fill all 10 positions on their nominating uh, slates. Uh, their process is a little more onerous at times. I've seen the, their application, and they have to do a lot more writing of, of answering questions, and, and I don't know if that deters students. Uh, the guidance counselors in the high schools, I don't know if they're being provided with as much information, but this is a good avenue for students to be going in um, and, and getting a very Ivy League type education uh, and then being able to serve their country. So it's a good avenue and it's not being well taken care of in uh, D.C. That's interesting. And so are there other jurisdictions where that's also true that, that you've seen? I would say that most of the states in the United States uh, are not as competitive as Virginia or Maryland. Uh, they do not have necessarily enough people to fill their 10 uh, nominations. Uh, it is not as competitive. So there, there's some, Texas, New York, Virginia, Florida, Georgia, some of those always have a lot of students. And then there's some that a lot of people just don't even know about the academies. Well, if we can get back to, we have only got a few min more minutes, but if we can get back to the issue of the senators or the congressmen meeting the students, I think that's kind of interesting that a number of members don't actually meet the students. On one hand, you want to make sure that, that, that there's no politics being involved, but on the other hand, wouldn't it be nice to know that you actually met your member of Congress? Well, I, okay, I'll take it back. Senator Warner holds a coffee in the June after everybody has made their decisions, and, oh. and he has a coffee for and any student who's going to a surface academy, no matter who nominated them, he ha has a coffee that we, it's very well attended, we have it on Capitol Hill. He shakes the hand of every single student, there's pictures, and he thanks them for their service that they'll be uh, contributing towards the United States. So he does end up meeting those who are going to the academies. So that makes sense, there's a difference between the application process and then actually going. Right, right. Sure. Uh, when, when we nominate, all that is is giving each candidate that opportunity that's part of the fulfilling of the requirements. Once they're nominated, those students still have to wait for an offer from the academy. So, and and there's, there are students, especially in Virginia, who are fully qualified who still don't even get offers just because of the numbers. You know, the class can only be so big and you, only so many students can come. So we have fully qualified students in Virginia who don't even get offers. Even though they've gotten the nomination? Yes, sir. Or a nomination? Right. And then one last thing, you mentioned the presidential nominations before, but I thought there was a vice presidential nomination as well. There are vice presidentials, and I beg every student to please apply to the vice president. It's, it's an online, you go to the academy, uh, it's, it's a one-page thing you fill out online, but those are, that's another opportunity uh, for the academy 
to get a nomination, for you to get a nomination for an academy. And you don't want to give up any options if you're serious about attending an academy. And to be clear, you're urging people to get as many nominations as they possibly can. Yes, everybody should apply to their congressman, two senators, and the vice president at a minimum. Then if you qualify for a presidential, please fill out that documentation. And then there's also ROTC programs, certain R junior ROTC programs are allowed to nominate. And then there's various other ones um, that, that you qualify, mostly they're military specific. Uh, but the whole list is on the Academy websites. Well, fair enough. We have about a minute or two left. What other last minute advice would you like to leave for students or families thinking about this in a serious way? Start early. Uh, the students need to think about what their grades are. They need to take their SAT multi SATs and ACTs multiple times. They need to be taking the harder courses. They need leadership positions. Uh, contact the congressmen or, or senator staffs and find out what the process is ahead of time. We're more than willing to talk to people. I've got the best job in the whole office because I'm working with the future of America and I'm very happy to talk with anybody who ever calls. Well, we will urge people to call you and contact you. Carol, thank you so much for coming on the show and continued good work and good luck with your work. And I, I think it's great that you're doing this. And I'd like to point out publicly that you've done this for a, a Democrat and you've done this for a Republican. So you're a bipartisan uh, helper, as it were, to get more students to go to our U.S. academies. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. If you would like additional information about Carol Ford, please visit Warner dot senate dot gov slash public slash index dot cfm slash academy nominations if you have comments or suggestions about higher education today please send an email to our viewer mailbox at higher education today at top colleges dot com thank you for watching we will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world Please join me again for another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.